Hi there, it's Brian Sebastian, Movie Reviews and More, Worldwide TV Tech. Oh my God, I messed up, I messed up now. Worldwide TV, <laughs> iTunes 247 out of Franklin, Tennessee. <laughs> iHeart Radio, all platforms around the world. So Mike, who are you and where are you coming from? Even though I know who you are, tell our fans who you are. Hey man, I'm Mike Vissera from Anime Zax and I'm here in lovely Nashville, Tennessee. So um, and we're getting some snow which is crazy. <laughs> hey, let's talk about this. I like the fact that you're from Connecticut, like I'm from Connecticut. You're, you know, you're in Tennessee and I'm, I'm usually in Franklin, Tennessee. Right. Those aspects. Did you ever see yourself going down to Nashville as that heavy metal rocker? Um, you know, in the beginning, probably not. But as things moved on in the 90s and stuff and things started getting really kind of different in the music industry, I found, I found myself here a lot more, you know, working a lot in Nashville. So um, it's a great place. I mean, just a great place to be. That's true. When did you leave Connecticut? Because I was, I've always followed your history for one strange reason. I don't know why, but I always found you fascinating. One, I love classic rock because, you know, you, I'm sure you know East Line, Connecticut. There was only three black families when I was there in the 70s. So right. I grew up on, you know, Led Zeppelin, Boston, you know, Jake Giles and everything like that. So till this day, yeah. I would have never known a lot of them would have been again, you know, personal friends. Uh, I would have never right. seen that coming. I never saw me going to Tennessee, what, five years ago. I never saw that. We got 4 million, 4 million, what, 104,000 views at five shows in Franklin, Tennessee out of all places. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. Yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. You know, um, I was moving around a lot, you know, obviously I, I've lived in a bunch of different places. I lived in Japan for a while. I lived in, you know, California and right outside of LA, but we've been here about 15 years now, it's close to 15 years. And, uh, you know, Connecticut, it, it's, it was a great place to grow up, but it's changed drastically. And, and the music industry or music scene in general in Connecticut has always been kind of rough, you know, and I was one of the fortunate few to get out of there. So, um, and actually have success from Connecticut. So, um, but yeah, you know, we've been here for a while and, and I'm happy we made the move, so. I was always fascinated, you know, when you work with Disney, that is just weird to begin with, but I'm not sure right. saw this coming. Did you see that coming, working with Disney and then going to Japan and working and having, a, you know, number one, number three, did you see any of that stuff coming? Um, we weren't sure, you know, uh, Sony in Japan actually approached me to do a, a, an anime thing. We did a thing called Animetal USA. And, and I mean, we had the full on makeup and costumes and, and that was really successful. So we knew there was a market for that type of thing. But uh, the Disney thing, we weren't sure, you know, they, you know, we had demoed a couple things and, and it was funny. We were hoping to get a deal but Disney themselves actually picked it up, which we never would have imagined, you know? Um, so it was pretty strange, you know? And, uh, and for it to be as successful as it was, we were really surprised, but happy, so. Exactly. I think back to yeah. NBA, I came out of, uh, I came out of video stores. Um, uh, so that day, that VHS beta, you think of Ted Sardos with Netflix, Ted came out of video, home video. There's Ted, this myself. Quentin Tarantino worked at a video store. Kevin Smith worked in a video store. They're the three of us that right. came that. Look where we all are now. But again, if you look right. at that realm of stuff, it worked. So anime was always huge for us. It was like yeah. the market was last to catch on to it around the world. So when I knew you were connected with that, I'm like, good for you guys, because you can yeah. go wrong by having that and always going to Japan. I would always say yeah. WWF then, WWE now in Connecticut, Japan was where they yeah. went to go make their money. So that right. surprised right. me lived there for a while. Talk about what that experience was like. Um, it was crazy. I, it was a band called Loudness that I sang for, uh, Jap like the number one Japanese uh, rock band. And, uh, you know, just, just being able to go there and experience things as, you know, being a foreigner, but I was with, a, you know, with the local guys. So I stopped, saw places and things that nobody else did ever. You know, so I saw parts of the country. We toured everywhere. We would do 20, 30 shows in a tour in Japan. And most bands from the States or Europe play four or five if they're lucky, you know. Um, 
and and it was crazy for me because I was a kid from Connecticut, you know, living with my mom at the time. And uh, you know, here I go. I'm on the cover of every magazine. I'm on every television show, radio, and I was this big star over there overnight. So it was pretty crazy, you know. But uh, Japan's a great place to go and play. They treat you, you know, it's like you're the Beatles. You know, when you get there, they just treat you like gold. So uh, really cool, really cool experience. And you picked up a little bit of the language, I think, too, right? Little bit, scotchy. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I, I, I say my I had to survive. Exactly. I say my prayers in, in Japanese because I became Bud a Buddhist member. So it was that typical uh, sect oh. practicing out of there. So I, I understand what that's like. Um, awesome. It's interesting because awesome. Um, who would have known? I mean, I, I, I remember telling Eddie Van Halen that my favorite rock song is Ain't Talking About Love and telling Gene Simmons my second favorite song is Let Me Go Rock and Roll. And, and then I, you know, I come into right. um, and they weren't my friends weren't used to hearing that. But again, I grew up white. I grew up listening to classic rock. You know, right. Turn out it came out of Connecticut. Right. I was one of the, the first black yeah. scalpers in Connecticut. So, you know, it's like when you go through in Haven and Hartford, Connecticut and, you know, the, the metal right. and all this. I was that's how I saw all the bands in concert. I was scalping their tickets. And then years later, when I moved to Connecticut, yeah. I would have never have thought I would have been friends with them. I would have I didn't see that one coming at all. Yeah, that just blows my mind. So I can right. see right. how everything started with you. That's interesting. As that singer. Yeah. Did you know right. you're going to be a producer? Did you see that one coming? Um, you know, I was always the guy that was really interested in that part of things, you know, from, from the first record I ever made. So I was always, I'd always be in the studio, you, you know, even if we were recording guitars, drums, whatever, I would be there from beginning to end. So I've always been really interested in that part of things. So um, you know, I hope that I could be a producer. Luckily, I, I was able to, and, and I've been pretty successful. But, um, you, know, I, you know, in the beginning, I just wanted to be a, a rock star and sing and have the girls and the parties, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, when you're a kid. But uh, I've been pretty fortunate, you know, I'm really, really lucky that I'm able to be successful and, and continue working. So Now, when you, you know, if you think of the, let's say the mid O's, and then getting up to where we are the last three years, how have you yeah. changed, not as a singer, but also as a producer, and then working with different bands? Because music's changed a lot. I remember when I was at, I don't know when you were in California, but when I was at the number one station out there, I was on, we were going up against KISS FM. We were going up against K-Rock and KLOSS. There were legends there. Yeah. And we were, yeah. we were the first station that was mixed. And I, cause I had, I would always be, I would always be the lone black guy in the room, always. So when I got to that station, right. in point, it was like, wow, this is this, this is interesting. Going up against KOLS, right. those guys, and then you going up against Rick D's. But I was also listening, I right. my my classic roots of growing up in Connecticut and listening mm -hmm. to those rock yeah. bands coming out of there because there was some great talented people. Some of those bands just didn't yeah. get out of their own way, but they were still good. I think of Boston, how yeah. it took them to make their, their second album, but they were still a great band, you know? Did you see, great band. Did you see yes. a lot of those changes coming as that producer side when you put on your producer's hat? Uh, yeah, you know, things have changed so much, just how you make records, and, and now they're more manufactured with the kids and stuff, and there's it's not so much where they go, you know, some of the bands, I guess, with the bigger budget still will go in and track you know, try to track live, but that's, that seems less and less these days, more of it, you know, more of it's just manufactured. It's all done in a computer. Um, we try to record as much live stuff as we can to keep that, you know, that eighties, nineties, you know, when you listen to those vinyl records, they just have so much attitude. So, um, but things technology wise have changed a lot, you know, um, but you just have to have an open mind about everything. You know, if you don't, you're not going to survive, you know, so, um, you know, and, and me being in that whole other world now, I'm in the whole media side of things as well with the Disney, with the anime side. You know, it's, it's, it's a learning experience constantly. So, and you have to be willing to adapt or you're in trouble. So, you know, just stay with the times and, and, and just keep learning, you know? You know, I, I'm glad that you said that. 
doing that because I, I joked to Scott Page. I'm like, Scott, if you weren't doing your, you know, your rock, you know, and roll podcast, we would have never met because he comes to the studio. I would have never met Steve Perkins and Kenny Arnott and all these people who brought right. my our studio that, you know, yeah. bring their shows to our shows. And I was like, it took a pandemic to make that work. Is this strange for you right. doing more media like this? Or is it part of the new norm for you? I, I think it, it's part of the new norm. I mean, obviously this, the whole lockdown has moved things along quicker for a lot of people. But for me, we were, we were already trending in that area. You know, we wanted to get into the media. We've been talking about this for years. You know, we wanted the anime Zach's thing or they're, they're creating, uh, um, characters, you know, we're talking about doing comic books and toys and a full on line of, of kid friendly, family friendly stuff, you know, so um, the only thing I really hurt is that we had a lot of touring, um, you know, uh, booked for this past year that we had to, you know, we just couldn't do because there's no venues open. So, um, you know, we were going to do a run of six weeks in Bro on Broadway in New York. And, wow. You know, now it's such a mess there. Yeah. And just various other things. So we're hoping this year to tour, but, um, you know, we're looking to, to, you know, go into the, the TV, the comic books, the toys, all that. So, um, and YouTube, obviously more and just, you know, everything, but, uh, you really need to, because music, music is, especially the metal world, it's a little tough. You know, you can go yeah. to Europe, you can go to yeah. Japan, but, you know, here in the States, you really have to do something, you know, over the top and, and really go into the other media fields. So, um, you know, so we were, we were thinking about this for the past few years, even before this whole crazy uh, 2020. So. so it sounds like you've always been on the cutting edge then, except people, you could, except you were probably underneath the radar and all of a sudden you just kept getting deal after deal after deal. That's what it sounds like to me. And if that's the case, good for you. Yeah. Yeah, we were, you know, I would say it was kind of under the radar, you know, especially being going to Japan and having the success there and being able to survive and take that, what you're learning there and start, you know, like you said, the anime thing, it's huge. It's huge in Europe. It's huge in South America. It's unbelievably huge in, in Japan. You know, it's a, it's a lifestyle there. So to find out there's there's a lot of different things out there that, you know, most if you're just a rock fan or a rock musician, you probably wouldn't know that how whole world exists. But it's huge and it's crazy. You know, it's a really cool thing. So, um, you know, just real lucky to be part of it and to keep working and keep, you know, like you said, kind of under the radar. And now it's starting to, to get out to a lot of different people. So, um, so we're hoping for the best. Well, I tell people now, you know, this, this, this last, I, I, you know, everybody know I saw it, they, they saw it, they know I saw it coming starting in 2018. I just didn't know what the name of the virus was going to be. So when we went to mm -hmm. TC 2017, uh, I didn't know I was going to have a show there. Um, it was just one of those things. I, I found the film, I picked it, had a great soundtrack. It started going to film festivals at one. They invited me down to Tennessee. And the last time I was in Tennessee was in like 1977 with a drum club. Wow. And then I had no idea I was gonna go there. So now I work with Swift, Southern Women in Film and Television there. One of my co-hosts mm -hmm. present the, you know, St. Jude's Hospital, uh, the Grand Ole Opry, uh, Graceland, that's all of our brands that we help with them on. Awesome. It's like an honor. And we always shot small. We always shot with four people and one camera person. And who would have known? Mm -hmm. And so I think what you've done is actually pretty cool because I can see how you did it. You just had to go and do yeah. it. Because unless you took that to go live in Japan or anywhere in Asia, it's not that easy. Right. No, no, it's not. It's not. There's, there's, you know, when I, when I was doing it, there wasn't as much, uh, there was very little internet and all that. So you're really kind of away from the world, you know, at that point in time. And, uh, you know, now it's a lot easier because you're constantly connected no matter where you are. But uh, to do it when I did it, it, it was difficult. But um, yeah, you have to, you have to take chances or you're not going to do anything. You know, you really need to. So, um, you know, just re again, real fortunate to be part of it and to, to be still in it. What year did you leave Connecticut? Uh, it was 2005. We've been here almost a little, about 15 years now. Um, so um, 
Yeah, probably. You know, I go back quite often. My family's still there. So, so I'm back there four or five times a year, you know, and spend some time. But, um, you know, Connecticut's changed so much. It's, it's not yeah. the same place I grew up yeah. in. And, uh, you know, and for the entertainment world, you know, there's no, nowhere better in the world than Nashville, honestly, for music and just access to anything and everything. And the talent here is unbelievable. You know, there's just so many talented people and uh, just, uh, you know, Nashville's changed a lot in 15 years too. Yeah. <laughs> Downtown yeah. is just, it's mind boggling, the building and everything, so. Well, it's also, you know, when I, I flew two co-hosts that had never been there before, not last year, we were last year, June, we were there for the Swift side of uh, some of Southern Women of Film and Television. And, and I just like, I just like the people there that I know. Um, it was yeah. really interesting. I've never had a cop stop me as I was walking, say, do you want to ride someplace? And I was like, well, this is interesting. I, that's a first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't accept it because I never knew if I was going to get out of there, but, uh, right. that it was, it was, it was fun, but if had I had not gone there and I know you can relate to this, we would have never built up what we have. You know, we have 6.7 million views a day and counting on the goal my goal right. April 2nd is to have 20, 25 million views a day in counting. But it started right. on a C. I would have never have seen that coming. So we took that right. chip, flew two more co-hosts down. And I love going back because I can go to Lipscomb University, shoot our shows. I can be in and out, yeah. bring other people who have never been there and say, this is where yeah. places to be. There's a lot of great hidden talent there. Yeah, yeah, it really is, you know, so. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy we're here, you know, where our, our kids are here and, you know, we're pretty well settled into Tennessee. Um, and uh, we're actually rebuilding our house. We were in the, the March 3rd tornado. Uh, we have oh, wow. we, we lost our house, our cars, everything. Yeah. So oh, wow. we're, uh, yeah, yeah, we lost everything. Um, but we're rebuilding and hope, you know, we hope to be back in a month or so possibly, but uh you know, that was an experience. That's the only bad thing here is the weather sometimes. It's a little crazy, you know, yeah. but, uh, you know, just, I, I just think it's really, if you're in the, you know, if you're in the entertainment business, this is the place to be right now. Um, Absolutely. Like said, there's, there's so much talent and so many cool people and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. So it's a great place to be. I was telling people, you know, the last time I was there, it Nashville, just walking down the, the main street was busier than Vegas. And, and I was telling oh, yeah. I was like, you don't understand. No, everybody's going to Nashville. It's busier than yes. in Vegas. Is. And, and I was showing them a video because I was taking the co-host out. We were going to Nudie's because one of our friends, the grandfather owns Nudie's and how it started. There's a history of that. And then Manuel's, all of our connections right. we never have seen yeah. coming. So I was telling them, this is what this right. is about. And they go, wow. And I'm like, yeah, this is busier than in Vegas on their busiest night. And it is. But I was looking yeah. at the talent. So many great musicians, artists, just creative people. Oh. And I was like, wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, just, just walking down Broadway, any of those little venues you go into, it's like, you know, and these guys are playing for tips. You know, it's like mind boggling, the talent, you know, it's like, wow, man, you know, just everywhere. So it is. It, it's a, you know, when, when, before the virus hit, you know, I would have people come to town and just be blown away by downtown, you know, just, just the nightlife and, and just, it's just unbelievable. You know, like you said, it, it's crazier than Vegas. It's crazier than most places. So um, really cool. Let's hope it gets back to that. Cause you know, it's, it's a cool city and, and, and hopefully things will get better soon. Well, I was alluding to is, I keep telling everybody between now and April 15th, the longest, there's only a short little break because everything is gonna start picking up slowly, but right. short, and you better be ready. Meaning, yeah. don't be surprised at the end of summer if you could start to go on small little, little two day, three day little tour things here, smell and playing, yeah. whether it's outside, it's gonna happen. Because before you right. year will be open and you'll have missed that, that small little last little time to write, write a screenplay, movie or whatever the case yeah. may be. So I can right. only imagine what you've been working on. By the way, what yeah. have you been working on? Um, a bunch of different stuff. We're, we're going to be releasing another single uh, in, I think, before the end of February. We're doing a, to cover a Strawberry Fields by the Beatles. And it's, it's a really interesting 
interesting uh, version of it. So we're, we're just finishing that up right now and that'll be coming out and uh, we're starting to do another record. Um, so I'm hoping by the spring that'll be released and you know, just working on the whole concept thing right now for the live show. We have a, a toy designer involved with things right now. Um, wow, really good for you. Just, just really getting this thing, promoting it and getting ready for, for the live show, you know. Yeah. Um, just promoting as much as possible, but we're always recording and always working. Always, you know, coming up with new ideas and things we can do to keep it interesting. So... And, you know, and the stage show is going to be really over the top, too. You know, it's going to be really exciting and a lot of visual stuff happening. So I'm just working on all that, making sure we're ready, like you said, you know. Yeah, because it's going to happen and it's going to be very, very quick. And then there's going to be so many, everybody's going to be on the road. <laughs> yeah. Is there going to be enough so roadies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I've got some friends that really need it. God, man, you know, so many guys just sitting at home and not able to, to make a living. You know, it's, it's some, most musicians, that's it for them. Boring, you know, and uh, yeah. it's really, really hurt a lot of people, but hopefully it's going to be picking up soon. So, um, I think so. I'm pretty confident things are going to get better soon. Yeah, it's going to happen really quickly now. Uh, I, I'm always good at predicting yeah. things. And, yeah. and and hats off to you always being that underground, because I like to do everything underground, too. And I, I have 13 co-hosts, yeah. and I want to do a part two with you, yeah. because I want the other girls to meet you. Um, it's never. I hate doing shows by myself now, because I want the right. other girls to know who we're talking to and vice versa, because they become friends. Right. If you hit that road, cool. I'll be able to help promote you guys with the audience that we have around the world, ages nine to awesome. eight. Awesome. And you know, when we're there with awesome. me, that's a big, big, huge thing because that's what we're supposed to be doing now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that would be great. You're, you're in Franklin, is that where your studio is? Or where's the- No, where, I'm in, I'm in Vegas are? right now, but we do have- Oh, what, now. If you think of Don King, the promoter, um, his right. brother, Jimmy Adams lives in Franklin. So way I always go to his estate. Oh. And I was gonna go live- Oh, cool. And then I said, no, let me just wait. And then I, we ended up building our own property up in Northern California. So I can go in and out, bring a couple of hosts oh, cool. to the university, do our stuff with, with Southern yeah. film and television. Uh, I can just go in right. and within 48, day, 48 hours and just do our stuff. Oh, awesome, awesome. That's cool. That's great. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna make sure that I contact you when I bring the girls in because I think that'd be great. We could just do an in-studio at Lipscomb University. Oh yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that's that's right around the corner. That'd be awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, just let me know anytime. Anytime. Look forward to it. What did the idea of thinking of wanting to do strawberry, you know, fields? How did that come about? Um, you know, I've I've always kind of done a version of it um for years, you know. Um, and I don't know, you know, I've had it. And they were talking, you know, we've been discussing about a next single and I just submitted all these songs. I'm like, look, these are a bunch of ideas I have. What do you, what do you think? You know, and really, I was like, oh, let me throw this one in there for the heck of it. And of course, the one that I just throw in is the one that they loved. You know, they're like, oh, my God, this is the one you have to do this version of it. So it's really how it happened. But, um, you know, I've always been a big Beatles fan. I've I've done covers, you know, I did a version of Ringo Stars, It Don't Come Easy. And Oh, wow. Great song. Yeah. Yeah. So I've always been a Beatles fan and always wanted to do some, you know, do something, but it had to be different. You know, I didn't want to just do like most people just kind of do a, uh, the same kind of version, maybe a little more modern. This version is really over the top. You know, it's, it's, you'll recognize it, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a metal version of Strawberry Field. So. Hey, I can't wait to hear that because in my mind, it sounds like it's going to be kick ass. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool, you know, and, and uh, so we're just finishing that up right now. But really, it was just, you know, we submitted a bunch of songs and uh, that was what they loved. They're like, that's the single. That's the one we want for the next single. So, you know, and that that's really it. But uh, kind of just messing around with different ideas, you know, and, and uh, submitting them. And uh, so it'll be cool. You know, I'm looking forward to this coming out and uh, the response has been good so far. And uh, we'll see what happens, you know, hope for the best. <laughs> Curious about this song, Pain. What about that song? Pain? Yeah. Oh, from, 
Yeah, that's from, was that, it was on the, uh, was it on the, on the Obsession record? It was on my I think so, record. yeah. I don't remember. I think it was that, yeah. Yeah, one of the two. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I think I may have written it at a, a time. I think when I, when I wrote that song, I was being pressured by the, by the label to to release something and we really weren't ready to release <laughs> it was the and it was the pain of being forced to do something that I didn't want to and I, I believe that's what I wrote that song about that makes um, a lot of sense know, just being forced it's like you know yeah yeah we just weren't ready you know we weren't ready to make a record there was a lot of things going on and, and you know financial side of things they're forcing you to do something it's like it's painful you know, and and, and that much. makes sense at that point. You can't, you know, you can't, nothing yeah. can be rushed. It just doesn't work no matter what it is. Right. And you're like, right. exactly. something. so that's why I liked it. <laughs> Cause I could, yeah, yeah I, I, I tell people, leave me alone. I'm way ahead of you. Right. We do my thing and yeah. you all look good. And they have exactly. all, they've all been happy. And then they're surprised because they're like, well, first of all, we didn't know you were black. We didn't know you could create this. <laughs> Yeah, there's many different geniuses out there. You just don't always know who they are. Right, exactly, exactly. It's so true, you're right, yeah, so. Talk about this. What is it like to be locked down as a musician, as a father, <laughs> as a husband in Tennessee? Yeah. What is that like? Um, you know, it's our, our lives have been turned upside down this past year because of the tornado too. So it's just been a lot of craziness, but, um, you know, we're, we're just right outside of Nashville. Um, I'm just uh, like about 10 minutes east of them and where we're at, it's, it really hasn't, you, know, you can still go out and you, know, you got to wear the mask and stuff. So it hasn't been too bad, but, um, you know, my wife works at Vanderbilt. She's a, she's a nurse at Vanderbilt and she's, she does the home health care. So she's been home working and I have, I have a, a temporary studio here where we're renting the house that we're renting. So it hasn't been too bad for us because we're still going about our daily thing. Um, it's just that normally I'll be on the road for, for a bit, you know, so we have a little break from each other, but uh, it hasn't been horrible but it hasn't been great either you know it's just uh you know like everybody just having to deal with all the changes and, and with life and that's what people don't realize it's hard for i get, think of the wrestlers <laughs> who used to be on yeah. 300 days a year and all of a sudden they were, they were stuck now because right the only activity that was going on in front of no audience yeah. which is different but yeah. still and i go if yeah. wwe can do this the world of rock and playing live can do it, but on a different way. And yeah, it still yeah. can. And you know, you always want to have the biggest, the best, and that great sound for your audience, you know, around the world. Right. And I know you can pull it out, but all people, I know you come up with something great because of the way yeah. you're thinking is and what has come your way. But at the same time, all of a sudden, you're there like you're injured. It's the worst type to be there, like you're laid up. You got all this creative right. just going yeah. on in your head and you're like, I got to get on the road. And right. Like you can't go anywhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's frustrating. You know, it is, but you know, it's just, you know, you always have that drive in you, you know, ever since you're a kid with the music thing, you're always, you know, excited to get back out there and, and play for people and have the coolest show and the coolest things and the coolest music. So, you know, you always, you got to have, keep that drive and it'll keep you, you know, keep you moving forward. So, we got about five minutes. Uh, give give me five songs that you liked, and I want you to tell the audience why you like those songs and why they should listen to them. Oh God, um, geez, I'd have to go back. Probably, probably one of my favorite songs ever, which is I, I'm sure I'm sure you know, but it's not something most people would think of. But uh, there's a song by Queen. Uh, now I'm here off the Sheer Heart Attack album. It's like uh -huh. one of my favorite songs ever. And when I was a kid, I, that song just, oh my God, you know, it was just so cool. Um, and of course, Freddie Mercury was a big influence on me and just such a great singer, you know, a great, great everything. Um, that song, um, probably like a rainbow song, maybe like Long Live Rock and Roll or, you know, something like that with Dio, you know, I was a big rainbow fan. Um, Scorpions, another, another band that I, I loved. Um, 
the Love Drive record. Probably Love Drive was a really, really cool song for me. Um, you know, of course, the Beatles, anything by the Beatles. I can't really pick one by them. And, and really, Queen is sort of like that as well. There's a lot of songs from Queen that I really love. Um, See, when you yeah, say that, <laughs> when you say that, it makes me think of Neil Preston, who is the, the best rock and roll photographer. So he was on the road with Queen going back to 1902. Yeah. And, and Neil yeah. became a friend. And so his book is on Queen. All the great photos that he took of Freddie in the yeah. band, and it's got yeah. so he worked with Brian May and and I've got the yeah. first name, all of that. So that's that's out now, and it was an honor to talk to yeah. him on that. He was at Nam last year, but I, you know, I got him on a Zoom with two of the girls. I'm like, this is, you know, every single photo this guy's ever taken there, every rock band, no matter when, yeah. he did, and you might yeah. know the name. It's like Neil Peart. You know the drummer from Rush, right. <laughs> but you might not. Rush, right, yeah. yeah. But he took all those iconic photos. And then I think of my, my third favorite song of all, the, of all time is Saint, you know, uh, Hey Jude. It always has. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's the yeah. live version on, if you watch it on, on YouTube, the live version where everybody comes on the stage and the Beatles are playing, it's that version that I love. And so yeah. Paul McCartney, and, and I got a chance to see Ringo about four years ago with his all star band in Hollywood. It was this, and then you just brought up a memory real quickly. Was yeah. I never thought about gently my guitar weeps until I heard the. Oh. Um, where did I hear it? I heard it at at, at the ASCAP Awards, uh, the Songwriters Awards. Some. Oh, okay, cool, cool. And I'm like, wow, this is a great song. This is George Harrison. Yeah. George became yeah. my favorite Beatle because of that, because of all the stuff that he did, and he reminds yeah. me of the stuff that you're doing. Because yeah. you just, it sounds like you think a different way. And again, my hat goes off to you, what you guys have accomplished. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, we try. <laughs> so. so with that, give you social media links. Um, there's animazx.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, Mike Vicera. You can always find me there. But the main site is uh, animazx.com. And then there's sohojohnny.com, who's... Uh, and he's you, you know so Johnny right yeah oh, yeah he's a great guy and he's involved with us and all our links and there's tons of media up on his site as well so any of those sites you can find plenty of info on us well Michael I want to thank you for being on movie reviews and more and I was really you know when I was looking up your stuff a couple of weeks ago I'm like wow he's in Connecticut how did I not meet him <laughs> yeah 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 I've been gone for a bit but uh you know Cool place, cool place to grow up, but man, it's changed. So um, I know. Uh, I talk to my friends back in East Lyme all the time. I'm going to do a special show with them on when we grew up in the late '70s, early '80s of things. Uh, uh, do you remember? Any, do you remember any of the old bands from Connecticut? Yes, I, I remember going in in, in uh, Waterford, New London, in East Lyme. Uh, it was they were alphabet letter like K R K R B Q or something like that. They used to play oh, N R B Q. And yes. RBQ, yeah. Yeah, they used, they used to play all over the place and all, all the yes, yes, yeah. And they, they used to drag me to see the live shows. And I was like, I don't want to see a live show. And then for my birth, yeah. first show I went to, they kidnapped me, took me to Harpic Civic Center. The, out of all people, Ted Nugent. That was, <laughs> oh God, I see. And I was like, what am I doing here? And I'm like counting. There's like 20,000 people were sold out. I was like, I'm the only black guy here. And then after that, I'm like, great white buffalo. It's all cool up. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, it's good. not that bad. I'm like, this is pretty cool. And then that's yeah. until that's how I got into rock. And my second concert was um, uh, EL, EL, uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer. And it was the Black and Blue Tour in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, and they got oh. stone lights there. So I got to see him. I can't remember the band, but I loved it because I was sitting on the floor. Yeah. Like, this is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that awesome. Means to be a that's rock awesome. and roller. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool. So, wow. Michael, so thank you so much. And I have to always say this to everybody: if you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it. I'm Brian Sebastian. Michael, thank you for joining us. This won't be the last time. The next time I, I have you back on, you're going to meet three of the other co-hosts. They're all women out of the 13, so they're going to love what you. Awesome. Do. All right. Uh, Appreciate great it. being here. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Take care.